So a little bit about us. We're a full service social media agency. We have uh, content creators, designers, animators, uh, paid social, social media managers. So we have a large, large team. Some clients need just one of our services. So some e-commerce companies take us for paid social. Some um, companies like we work with Newcastle on just media, so photography, videography. Whereas Hard Rock today, we work with them on everything. So I'll talk to you a little bit more about Hard Rock and kind of how we even got to that point. So these are some of the clients that we work with, loads of different sectors. Um, and again, you know, you've got NHS worked for us for a full campaign during COVID. It's slowed down a little bit now. Um, Catalyst, Big Housing Association, and not from being more aware of just an animation. So they choose and pick which services like use us for. Um, I was surprised at this when I started working with Hard Rock that they actually launched in London in 1971, the first ever Hard Rock. You always think, I always think Las Vegas, I always think Hard Rock, American, cheesy. First ever Hard Rock Cafe was in London. Uh, two American owners, but a British brand in essence. There's a picture. Um, I think we're too young to remember that, but... There are also eight Hard Rock cafes in the UK, but only two are franchises. So the other one, I believe, is Edinburgh. Newcastle fell into the franchise. They've been trying to work for years to find the people at the Hard Rock to talk to, to get a franchise. Um, and they finally got connected and they finally got approval to do one in Newcastle, which was a huge thing for them. Um, we were contacted by the owners to pitch um, for the campaign. And we had to come up with some creative ideas for it. Nice, wet, miserable day in Newcastle. Um, ultimately, the aim was to build awareness, create engagement, and drive sales. We always say to people, you only get one chance to do a launch campaign. If you mess that up, it's hard to come back from it. Also, if you get it right, it can really help you, like set you up for the next six to eight months, even longer. Um, after the excitement of being able to pitch for a brand like this, we create a proposal including concepts and campaign ideas. Um, the owners loved the ideas and we won the pitch. Um, and we'll take you through the initial ideas and how things did change during COVID, how uh, the campaign got broken up and how we had to re-strategize due to COVID. Um, initially, when we bring a client on board or we have an initial talk, um, we have an internal ideas meeting every week where we just chuck a load of ideas into a pot, see what we like, see what we don't like. So we did that with Hard Rock. Um, we also did an audit on what they were currently doing. Hard Rock had already made a start. It was good. Um, it was clear what they were doing, but I felt as though where it was positioned in the city under Time Bridge, the global brand that it is, and the fact that we had a bit more freedom because it was a franchise, we need to do something spectacular. So we came up with some ideas, and then we, like, like I say, pitched to the team at Hard Rock. That's come out not great there, but month one, we came up with a campaign name of Rock and the Tine is All Mine. Bit cheesy. Um, Hard Rock is slightly cheesy. They're trying to move away from it now. If you notice the colors on Hard Rock, you'll see through this, it changed into like loads of different types of colors, purples, yellows. They've still got the oranges. That, they're even getting rid of that a bit more now, which I was shocked about. Um, so we had quite a lot to learn during this process. Um, the main video concept was to put Freddie Mercury impersonation act into Hard Rock. I'm not sure if you're aware, but at Hard Rock's under Time Bridge, the Guild Hall. The Guild Hall was the old merchant's quarters. So there's a courthouse above it um, where they used to uh, um, send people off to Australia. Um, so <laughs> it's got some history. The courthouse is still intact. It's still exactly the same as it was. So we thought, why don't we put Freddie Mercury up there, get him sentenced to a life of hard labor, get them go downstairs, work in hard rock and break free. Bit cheesy, bit fun, bit different. I'll chat to you later on what happened with that with hard rock. It didn't go out, let's just say, but um, you know, some of these ideas don't <laughs> turn to fruition, let's say. Some of the other media we had, we suggested, um, and these were some of the design examples that we pitched to the guys. So what we want to do is replace the famous landmarks with hard rock icons. Someone rang up Hard Rock about that and complained when we put that out. Um, 
said, what have they done to Grey's Monument? How could they do that? So I guess we'll take that as a compliment. That was good Photoshop. Um, it's Time to Rock was the second month as well. And then these are some more of the design examples that we created. Again, just putting in the silhouette, the background. And then this one was really nice, I thought, incorporating the Into the North with the guitar. Um, you know, cheesy, fun, just a bit different. There he is, the man himself. Um, yeah, we'll touch on that in a bit. And this is kind of how we pitch to the guys. So they get a monthly package with how many posts to get. This has changed now, it's got TikTok on. Um, Instagram stories, account manager, advert management, how many content creation days they get, uh, how much community management they get, and how many animation suites they get. So on this one, this is a full package. It was a chunky package, it was a good package. Um, but basically, they're only taking a little bit of everyone's time to combine it in a bigger package. Um, yeah, we, we created that on the 2nd of September. We'd already started to come out of a lockdown. We'd had a decent summer. Some of that really good summer in hospitality. Um, obviously, we didn't know what was to come. Um, I won't get political, but um, we know what happened from that point in. 30th of September, we launched the campaign. Uh, Boris talked about how it was a crucial moment uh, in the crisis. He would not hesitate to put further restrictions in place. It worked both ways for us. Everybody was sat at home on the phone looking for something to be positive about. So actually, this was a good excuse to follow Hard Rock, to engage with Hard Rock, and hopefully in three months' time, go to the venue. On the other hand, who wants to engage with a venue when they don't know when they're going to? So it was quite difficult. Um, again, not the news that hospitality industry want to hear. We had a lot of clients. We have around about 30% of our clients in hospitality. It was difficult for them. We were up and down. We were putting strategies out one day, changing it the next day. I'm sure you're all aware of what happened and how you had to re-strategize. Um, we moved ahead with the campaign, hoping that in three months we'd be open for business. Um, as discussed in the proposal, month one is where we have to create as much hype and engagement as possible. We view social as two different sides. So your business page is like your shop front. I use like the Fenix window as an analogy. Fenix window do it every year. It attracts thousands of people. Ultimately, if they didn't get the people, it wouldn't be worth doing, would it? It's a shop window. It's fun. It's engaging. It's different. That's what your business page should look like. Your social should look fun, engaging, different. Don't try and sell through it. Try and incorporate them people's lifestyles. Try and mirror your audience and what they want to see. We also run a paid campaign alongside this. The paid campaign linking with your website and your pixels will do all the heavy lifting for you. You know, as um, the guys from Let's Run Social, I heard their talk there, that's where the heavy lifting comes from. That's where you should be really pushing them through funnels. This side is all about engagement, fun, different. Because realistically, why would you continue to follow Hard Rock Cafe if you'd been twice or three times? Why would you want to follow them anymore if they weren't pushing the right content to you all the time? So, we pitched the ideas. We got a few basic messages out. Um, I'll probably give you a bit of background of who we're working with on the project. We're working with the franchisee owners. We're also working with Hard Rock International. They obviously have a lot of sites to look after. And we were quite low down the pecking order. Um, they asked us if Newcastle sits on a river. You know, this is the type of stuff that they weren't aware of. There was five million people from there, and they were brilliant marketers, but the problem was they didn't have any local knowledge. We said that Hard Rock as a brand, you know, you'll get people coming off the train, they'll come and they'll go to a Hard Rock because they know it, don't they? It's trusted. During the pandemic, people weren't traveling. They weren't flying anywhere. You know, we didn't have that. So what we said was, you need to engage a local audience who will come five, six, seven times a year. The only way you'll engage a local audience is if, is if you know what they want or a bit local crack, a bit local dialect. And that's what we put in the campaign. They approved all this, which I was quite shocked at because they are really, really strict on their brands. So we pushed out a few of their messages, which we knew would be quite slow. Then we started to incorporate this. This was the first big one we pushed out. This is, you know, 2.3K 
um, likes, loves, interactions, and 990 comments. I got 440 shares for a post. That's just on Facebook as well. That went nuts on Instagram. Again, this is our content. We had the drone up. Um, I'm not gonna play a video because it doesn't look great with that sound on. But again, just showcasing where it's gonna be with the iconic landmarks in. We also combined Hard Rock's content because they're very keen on pushing their own content um, with a little bit of a twist on it. So we take or made up a tweet, depending on how good the tweets are, put it over their stuff and come out with content like this. Again, it didn't get an unbelievable reaction, but it's about keeping them happy as well because there is so much content that we've got to push from uh, their head office. This one did exceptional. Um, it worked in a few different ways. It's exactly where the hard rock is. We know we've all got an iconic um, key side. And I think it was just fun and different. You know, I hope people don't think we're gonna shove a guitar there, but you know, it was just um, having a bit of fun with the campaign. We all know what hard rock's about. We don't need to be sold everything about it. We just need to be sold the lifestyle and what, it's, what, what it is about. Again, this one did excellent. Um, I'm not sure if they actually put that on the venue like that. I'm not sure if they got that made. Um, but yeah, these all came from our ideas meetings, you know, different quirky stuff. Everything was going great. Another lockdown. So we met with the guys. What the hell do we do? Um, we'd, we'd been going a month. The page was going nuts, like, Absolutely nuts, getting huge, huge growth on it from the content. Um, these were the best performing um, posts from the campaign for the first month. I didn't want to say I told you so, but we kind of did. We said the content that we designed would perform the best. Um, and it did. It really engaged the local audience and made it approachable, friendly, different. Um, that was on Facebook and slightly different on Instagram. Again, the guitars crept in on there, but the top perform one again um, is a guitar monument. As I touched on before, we did pitch Freddie Mercury. Now, it wasn't the easiest thing in the world trying to ring 20 Freddie Mercury impersonation acts to try and come. You'd be surprised how many there is actually of them, right? There's quite a lot. You put it in Google and there's hundreds of them. Um, we got one up. We put the full brief to him. We did it. Um, so like I said before, that's the Guild Hall above there. There he is having a hard rock pint. Um, the whole idea was him just to come, have a bit of fun. He was sentenced to hard labor. He comes down, he grafts on the cafe. He opens the cafe, he opens his t-shirt, he's got a hard rock Newcastle um, t-shirt on. You know, really iconic. And just to give you a bit of an idea on how much merchandise Hard Rock sell, it can equate up to 30 or 40% of the revenue. It's it's insane amount of stuff. Um, people will fly globally to get the pins. I had no idea. I had to get into this world. I'm talking people would flew from you know Canada to get the Newcastle pin just to go to the pin collection. So it's a really, really, really big community. So Hard Rock stepped in at the last minute. We sent it all off to them. It went really, really high in hard rock and they got cold feet because of the copyright. We originally did put the song on, uh, Break Free, but we took it off. We put a bit of a cheesy version on. Um, I'll show you the video without the sound on. Look, it's cheesy. It's meant to have that little element of silliness about it. It's not a production video because if you create a real production video for it, it wouldn't work. It needed to be a little bit stupid. I'm actually a bit good, we never got to use this, but probably saved my company, going to fancy Queen coming against us. 
So that was going to be a series of stuff we're going to do. So more characters were going to come in, we're going to do different things. But we re-strategized, we had a look at what was going on, and really we didn't need it in the end, but it just would have been a nice touch. Right, finally some good news. We'd come through, you know, Christmas, we'd come through everything, stuff was starting to lift. Um, the restrictions start to lift around 12th April, so you've got to think that we were not posting at all during that time. We'd offered Hard Rock to do it uh, for two posts a week. It's kind of a goodwill gesture, and we would have caught up on payments later on, or even just kind of scrapped it, because we wanted to keep the engagement there. However, looking back, it probably was the best idea just to stop it, because they had no idea when they were opening. Um, nobody had any idea what they were going to do when they came back out of COVID, what it looked like. We were going to be open in a week, or we were going to be open in a day. What was going on? So we met the guys, um, we finally had a build date because everything had been kicked back on their end. You know, the amount of money that had got into doing the venue was astronomical. I don't know if you've been in, but it is stunning inside. It's an amazing venue. Um, the build date was May the 21st. We need to sit back and go, how do we get the engagement even better than it was before? Um, so we went back to the drawing board again on that one. Everything I'm pitching to you here is what the client sees. Everything we do behind the scenes is reading the data, running around like headless chickens trying to get content sorted, you know, trying to understand what each uh, profile's algorithm's changing to next week. It's all about the behind the scenes for us. What we want the customer to see is a polished edit. You know, everything that goes out is um, obviously polished, clean, and immaculate. And we read the data on this. We wanted to focus around building the engagement back up. The booking system was a key one for us. Um, we installed Pixels on their website, which tracks everything. So we're running a paid campaign for that as well to get people to the website while keeping this highly engaging. The key here was to build a community. Hard Rock is a community of people, whether it's buying the pins or whether it's going down for a family meal, it's a community. Um, and of course, we actually had an opening day for the venue now. This is what we did in the second two months. Um, we came up with the idea of naming our local burger Read some of the comments in there. They're quite funny, to be honest with you. Um, we put that out because, again, being a franchise, it, it has a little bit more freedom to do what it wants to do. And we did put the burger in, and I'll show you that later on. Again, you know, nearly 900 comments on a post. This is just on Facebook as well. Um, the YI Burger, named by... I'm not going to pronounce that. Um, so... Even that got a good reply. Um, just being a bit fun and different on all our posts as much as possible. This was actually the franchise owner's grandkids. So they wanted some memories from open the, the Hard Rock Cafe. So we had the kids run and knock on the door and peek through the letterbox. Just as a bit of fun, you know, um, we know you're after a sneak peek. I promise you it'll be worth the wait. Fun, different, engaging, and they get some nice pictures to show there. The kids when they're older. Um, again, it's a family venue, so we started to bring that in towards the end of the campaign. Guess the famous Jordy. I think Alan Barnes is on there. <laughs> um, Sam Fender, of course, it's Sam Fender. It's quite obvious. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to make it fun enough that people want, or easy enough that people want to comment. If you make it too hard, no one actually guesses anywhere. So I think it's quite obvious that one. And there is the burger. I believe that's peace pudding in that. So I, I was a bit, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of it, but some people like peace pudding. So um, we've got the black bun and all this content I'm showing you now has been designed by us, taken by us, and then posted out by us. So we have full control. So we say, this is what we want to do. This is how we want to do it. When we want to shoot, this is the edits. And then obviously when we keep all the content in our media team, we re-edit for TikTok. Reels has gone nuts now. Every, from that, we can re-edit and, and disperse out. Um, and we're actually shooting less and less big videos and more and more short videos, more Reels. I mean, TikToks have spent thousands on bloody camera equipment and now we're gonna do it on a mobile phone. You know, the, the world is changing now. Um, and we're just gonna to adapt to each client's needs. This one went absolutely insane. Uh, Running competitions on socials is a funny one. If you can get away with it, yeah. 
uh, it's becoming harder and harder. There are T's and C's in it, and some brands get a little bit nervy about it because it is a gray area. Top tip is don't boost it, right? Because if you boost it, people in Ireland start looking at it and take it down. So just leave it for the first 24 hours, and if it's got good enough, then maybe shove a boost on it. Um, it is difficult now. This was a little while ago, um, and it's not a long-term strategy. But what we did as we had loads of people sat at home who wanted to go out for food and drink, and we had a captive audience because we built up such engagement. So we thought we'll chuck one in, and it went ballistic, to be honest with you. Um, so that one worked really well. Again, this was really sharing the customer photos. So during this time now, the customers are starting to take pictures of the signs. The mix of content we like to do is some design stuff at the beginning, but then when we start to get more customer shots and more content of our own, start to fade that out a little bit. You'll always need some just to show you're really professional. These, these shots will be more engaging than probably your stuff because it's real, it's raw, and people don't feel like they're being sold to and it's building that community again. I mean, that got 5.7K, you know, it was, it was huge. And again, prepping for the booking system going live. This is just a short bit of what we did. We did animation stories, we did animation videos, we did a ton of stuff. But again, just showing that we were uh, pushing to the guys that we are prepping you for the booking system going live. Um, this is some of the uh, images that we took when it's, well, that'll probably be the nicest it ever looks. That was just before we're opening. Um, and you'll see the difference on Facebook and Instagram interactions when I go through the end on these. So this was a, this was a key part of the, the, the campaign. We went live uh, on the opening night. So what we had was we had one person with Facebook in their hand, one person with Instagram in their hand, and we went live. The good thing we're going live was um, that from this video, we can then, obviously it stays there, we can then boost it and share it and it'll go up the feeds. That got 82K views in the end, which was a humongous amount. It notified every single person, obviously, who was following the page and there was thousands of them at that point. You know, the page is up to 35,000 followers. So it was, it was a big audience to go at. This was uh, the opening night video. It's, it's very uh, hard rock. You've got to run it through multiple layers of their marketing team. And we had the idea of coming in, switching up, going round, and kind of keeping the camera moving, because uh, it is a dynamic venue. But the music wouldn't have been probably what I've chose. There's some probably cheesy bits on it, but that is a bit of what the hard rock's about. So nice video, I won't show you all of it because it's quite long. So, this was the post we did on Facebook. So we always find on Facebook, when we come to do a launch of anything, we'll post images on Facebook for the launch. They'll always perform better than video. I think everyone thinks that video is fantastic to post for launch something, but it's quite long to watch for someone. Someone just wants to see a snippet of what it looks like and to engage with it really quickly. So we did the, the three images of the cafe and one outside. And it went, you know, it was, it was huge. Each individual image actually did the best out of the full campaign that month. And on Instagram, that did the best. So, you know, that was actually last place. Um, a few reasons for the Instagram. There were some large influencers who could share it. So some larger influencers did share it. So it went to bigger feeds. And that was as simple as that. This is some of the content we shot. That was the opening night. Again, a bit more of the drone. Um, and again, this was moving into when the venue was starting to open up, just some different content. And these were the results from the campaign. So we increased the fan page um, on both Facebook and Instagram by 38,000 people. So the Instagram now sits around 13K. Uh, the Facebook is around about, oh, I should have checked that, shouldn't I? Um, I can't remember, to tell you the truth. Um, total engagements across Facebook and Instagram was 785,000. So that's people liking, and sharing, and commenting on it, which is a huge amount. And we had 8.6 million impressions. Um, so that's obviously eyeballs on the content. 
That was over a three month campaign. That's a large amount for a relatively smallish local campaign. Um, you know, we've, we've talked national um, impressions that we have bigger budgets. Obviously that doesn't touch the sides, but for a local venue to open up, it's a huge amount. 212,000 views on our launch campaign videos and we booked the tables out for three months. So all of our socials were there to set up for when that website went live. So the website didn't go live until like two, three weeks out. The amount of bookings was, was astronomical. Yes, because it was COVID. I won't you know, deny the fact that people did want to go out and did want to book, but we had delivered the right content to them to do that. You know, covers with an estimated uh, return of obviously 800 grand. Um, so yeah, really, really good campaign. To conclude, I think I touched on it at the beginning. I could have gone into audiences more. I could have gone into the paid social, the reels, the stories. But what I wanted you to see was a polished edit of everything we do, um, kind of behind the scenes. So I could board you with data and board you with other stuff, but I want to show you what it actually uh, looks like when we post it out. Um, simple, clean, well thought out content um, was the key to this campaign. So yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, our stand's just over there. So if you've got any questions, pop over. But yeah, appreciate it, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.